We are going to do a drawing demo of a ball and cube. So we're going to use a piece of paper that already has a tone. So I'm using a piece of recycled paper. Um, it's actually a bag from the grocery store that I just cut up. And I'm using a charcoal pencil to draw my sphere. I'm going to also draw my cube. And you can see that this piece of paper is crinkled because it's recycled. And I'm just going to bear with it. But you can use paper that is called pastel paper. And pastel paper is something that comes in a variety of colors and tones. Uh, Canson, C-A-N-S-O-N, um, is a brand that makes a great pastel paper. So there's our cube and our sphere. Here's our light source. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw our light and shadow onto our form. And so by having the light source depicted, it helps us to determine where the light and shadow is going to fall on the ball and the cube. So if our light source is coming from up here, we're going to put an arc across the ball so that we know this part of the ball is catching the light. And as the ball curves away from the light, it's gonna become in shadow. But we're also gonna include a curved cast shadow, not only on the cube, but also coming on the table uh, that will show how the ball is casting the shadow on two places, uh, the cube, as well as the table that the ball's sitting on. And we're going to put a line back here that's going to represent where the table ends and the wall begins. And that way we can show our cast shadow coming off the box. And what we're going to do is we're going to shade in this side of our cube because it will be in shadow. And with our direct light coming from the spotlight, we will keep the side of the cube that the, that the cast shadow from the ball is on, we'll keep that side unshaded. So we're not gonna put that in shadow, we're gonna keep that the most direct light of all of our light. So this is gonna be our shadow side of the box. And we're gonna tie that shadow side of the box in with the shadow that is coming off of the form. We call it the cast shadow. And what we're going to do on the top of the box is we're going to consider that to be indirect light. So indirect light is a little bit less intense than the direct light. So we're just gonna lightly shade that in just a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna shade in the side of the ball. And we're gonna shade in the cast shadow. So we're connecting those. So you always wanna think about your shadow passages and the fact that the shadow on the ball and the cast shadow are connected into one passage. The same thing here, shadow from the box, cast shadow on the table, and that is connected as well. Now we're going to switch into our um, core shadow and the core shadow happens right where the light and shadow meets and what we're going to do is we're going to use some small lines known as 
modeling lines. Some people call them hatching lines, but they have a slight curve to them. We're gonna press down a little bit and we're gonna darken what we call the core. And I'm carrying these lines into the back of the sphere. Now I'm going the other direction and I'm sort of bringing these lines into the light side of the sphere. Now I'm gonna darken up my cast shadow a little bit and I'm gonna go right up to the edge of the ball. And by darkening up this cast shadow, what it's going to do to the side of the ball that's right next to it is it's going to lighten it up. So it's going to make this side of the sphere, this side right here, appear slightly lighter. So there you go. You can see how just by going in and making that a little bit darker, this side of the ball starts to look lighter. That's just the brown paper showing through, not being shaded. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Okay. So we're gonna darken the shadow right up to the edge of the cube. But as we get to the other side of this cube, we want it to lighten up just like the side of the ball because it too is going to be considered reflective light. So now I'm using my modeling lines and I'm pressing down a little bit and I'm using those small lines just like I did here. And when we used the modeling lines on the sphere, what we were trying to do is soften the edge so it looks gradual from light to shadow. Here, we don't need to make it feel uh, round or soften an edge necessarily, but we do want to feel like the dark part, the core, is gradually shifting into reflective light. Now we're going to shift down into our cast shadow. We're gonna do just what we did off of the ball, which is we're gonna shade right up to it and we're gonna darken this up closer to the form. And now what that does is that helps the this side of the box to look a little bit lighter. Now I'm shading this down just a teeny bit because I would I want it to uh, not jump out as soon. And I'm going to darken this up a little bit. Here we go. I think we can even darken up this cast shadow right here. All right, now I'm gonna to switch to a white charcoal pencil. Because we're on a brown paper, by using this white charcoal pencil, it will help us to see uh, where the light is hitting this ball. And so right up to the edge, I'm starting to use my hatching or modeling lines because this is the most intense light. And then if we use those small lines and we carry them into the lines that we were drawing with the other charcoal pencil, it starts to show that transition from what we call direct light into the indirect light and then into the core. 
So you get the light, the indirect light, the core, and then the reflective light, and then here's your cast shadow. We're gonna do the same thing over here because this is all direct light. And you can see I'm building this up gradually. I'm not getting, I'm not pressing down too hard too soon so that I can get it to a nice even light value that uh, will enhance this entire side. So depending on how light you want something, you're gonna try and remove all the brown paper by putting in more of the white pencil and less of the brown paper. If we let some of the brown paper show through, then we're gonna get this effect with the indirect light. You're also getting the effect with the reflective light, but they appear different because we are putting this one in the shadow, we're putting this one in the light area, and also we are um, utilizing the process and the approach slightly different. So there's that. And then we're just going to just very, very lightly put a little bit of light up here for our indirect light. All right, so this, this is more intense, less intense. They're both in light, same here, these two. Then we have core, reflective light, cast shadow. The one thing that we wanna put in, in addition, is we wanna put some light here on the table. And notice that I'm just sort of letting it fade out. And I'm using the lines and spreading them apart just a little bit because I'm letting some more of that brown paper show through when I do that. So as I separate the lines and, and spread them out further, just like my fingers, the spaces in between my fingers represent the brown paper and how much of it we see. So if we bring the lines close, very little spread them out, the more brown paper shows through. Here I'll spread the lines out a little bit further because even though there's light hitting the table over here, um, it's not gonna be as intense as the light that is on the table closer to the spotlight. we can take our charcoal pencil and we can shade in the background a little bit. And you wanna keep your hand pressure even because if you press down too hard in any of these strokes, they'll start to take away from the overall effect. Go over here with my light pencil and lighten up a little bit of the table right here.
you can see I'm going back into the core, darkening that up a little bit more, using those modeling lines. All right, and there you go, there you have it. That is our light and shadow with a light and dark pencil on a paper that already has a tongue.